In this video, we are going to take a look at how to create a simple wireframe in Adobe XD. Uh, a wireframe is a placeholder for content. Um, if you think of it as sort of a bare, bare skeleton of what you're going to do with your design, whether it's an app design or website. So what we're looking at here is my version of a word of the day app, which when you click on a word, it will give you the definition and the use. Uh, an example. Uh, but before we get going, I just want to quickly go over something. What you're looking at right now is the Macintosh interface. Uh, with a Mac interface, you actually have a, a main file menu where it says file, edit, object, etc. With the PC interface, it's slightly different. It looks very similar, but that menu is a drop down menu. So I've taken a screen capture from the PC and I want to actually show that to you right now. So this is what the PC environment looks like. Uh, so you can compare it to the Macintosh environment. The biggest difference here is no main menu at the top, but you do have these three little lines on the side, which is a drop down menu. Um, the drop down menu here is also called a hamburger. Um, but in this case, let's just refer to it as three little lines. So if you click on that, what ends up happening is that this menu here, this is what it looks like when it's open will drop down and tell you new, open, open from your computer, all the same things that you would get from the Macintosh hard drive here, uh, sorry, the Macintosh main window here, which is, as I said, file, new, open, open from your computer, etc. So um, they're not different. It's just that the interface is ever so slightly different. So let's get on with it here. Um, so again, uh, I'm going to show you how to recreate a few things here. So the home uh, the word list, and one of the actual word definitions, uh, just so you get an idea of how you would create a wireframe. And again, like I said, you want to propagate it with some kind of uh, dialogue. So that way, when you go into your design, I mean, there's no design elements here, but when you go into to insert your design elements, you have something already to look at to give you an idea of what it is you want to do. So it's kind of a roadmap, shall we say. So let's start by making a new document. So um, I went command N, uh, control N for the PC users. Otherwise it's file new. So um, the current app that I created was for the iPhone X XS 11 Pro. I'm just gonna click on that, open up a new dialogue. And uh, a couple things that you need to note, um, when you're working within the uh, infrastructure here of, of XD, what you really should do is create a grid so you have something to work with. Now you also need to create labels. So if this is going to be your first page or your home page or anything that you want to call it like that, you have two ways of actually um, putting the label on. One is to double click here within the application or the other is down at the bottom on the left here there is an, uh, an asset panel and a layer palette. If you open up the layer panel you'll see it says the exact same thing for the artboard. So if I were to change it here and call it home, as soon as I hit enter, it also puts it on the artboard. So either or whatever your workflow is. Um, the next step, like I said, is I want to create a grid so I have something to follow. So um, down here on the right hand side, this is the formatting palette, uh, where it says grid, if you turn it on, it's going to immediately put on the layout. And the layout, of course, is a column grid. Column grids are what we classically use for document layout, for print, and uh, various other things. It will work here too for screen, but it might not give you exactly what you're looking for. So from that same menu, drop down where it says layout and change it to square. Um, square will give you those little squares, kind of looks like graph paper. Uh, you can adjust those square sizes if you want to. Uh, right now it's it's using eight as the default. I'm going to keep with that, but if you want larger squares, you can use a larger number, um, you know, or smaller squares, use a smaller number. So in this case, uh, now I want to actually put um, the... <laughs> I've lost the dialogue. I want to put the actual lines in that will tell me where and when to stop to keep my content inside away from the screen edge. So I'm going to drag this out and at 24 pixels, I'm going to drop it. Now, the reason that we want to do this, and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side while I'm talking. Um, the reason that we want to do this is because it's not good for anything that is content created 
to actually spill off to the side. You, it causes a little bit of distortion when you're looking at it. And I also want to bring it down from the top. Uh, the reason being, in particular, the, the model, the current models of iPhone have a little piece up here missing uh, where the earpiece goes. So you don't want to put anything crucial into that area. It's probably just a little bit bigger than what I've done, but I'm not going to put anything that close to it anyway. And down at the bottom, sometimes there's a scroll bar, uh, like a side-to-side -side bar that comes up when you're looking at the iPhone. So again, try and keep everything away from the edges, but I don't feel that I need a guide um, at the bottom. The sides and the top will keep me within the area that I want to stay. Now, at this point, we would start putting um, uh, our elements together, but before we do that, uh, I know that I'm going to need at least one or two more of this, so I want to show you how you can save some time. So, uh, very easily, if you click on the label, it will select the entire board, and you can go Command C, and again, Control C for the PC users. And if you then go Command D or Control D, it will duplicate the exact same thing you did. Now, there are times when you can actually just Control C, Control V, or Command C, Command V, um, and um, what will end up happening is it will make a duplication, but it will bring in the grid, but not your guides that you just put down. So you want to use this duplication tool in order to copy everything over because that keeps a unit, you know, keeps things consistent within your document. So uh, for now, I'm just going to leave that one there and let's start putting some stuff on here and then I'll show you some other, um, some other things. So, uh, uh, and again, I'm going to change this to the words list. There we go. And you can see it come up in the artboard as well. Hi everyone. Thanks for watching. Click the link in the description below to explore more free online professional development on the Adobe Education Exchange. And click the link on screen to subscribe to the channel for more videos.